Voyager 1, survived the darkness, crossed into interstellar space, and continued whispering back secrets from the edge of everything we know. But recently, something changed. Join us on the enigmatic journey of why, as we delve into another mystery surrounding Voyager 1, breaks silence after 47 years in space. After months of silence and a failed data system, Voyager 1 came back online, and the message it returned with didn't sound like data. It sounded like a warning. A steady, low-frequency home. A gravitational tug from an invisible force and a silence inside NASA that speaks louder than anything else. This isn't just another deep space anomaly. This is confirmation that what we feared might be true. The edge of our solar system is not empty. And maybe it never was. For decades, Voyager 1 has been the quiet hero of space exploration. A distant relic of human ambition traveling deeper than any object we've ever sent into the stars. It has outlived predictions, surpassed expectations, and continued transmitting, even as its systems aged beyond reason. But in late 2024, something shifted. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory noticed the data being received from Voyager 1 had become incomprehensible. Lines of raw, garbled noise replaced what were once clean streams of scientific measurements. The spacecraft's flight data system, essentially its memory and processing unit, had malfunctioned. It was still sending a signal, but that signal was filled with chaos. For five months, NASA worked in silence, unsure if Voyager was even capable of understanding the commands being sent to it. Every attempt to re-establish communication had to endure a delay of nearly 45 hours, 22.5 hours to reach the spacecraft, and another 22.5 to receive a response. The effort was painstaking, delicate, and filled with uncertainty. But then, against all odds, something changed. On March 20, 2025, Voyager responded. And it didn't just respond with a carrier signal. It sent back information. The engineers celebrated, but as they began to decode the fragments, they realized something was wrong. The data didn't match known parameters. The instruments were functioning. The spacecraft was stable. But the environment it was reporting wasn't. Something out there had changed, and Voyager had seen it. For years, the heliopods, the invisible boundary where the sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins, was thought to be a fading gradient, a subtle transition into the emptiness beyond. But Voyager 1's newly transmitted readings painted a different picture entirely. What the probe encountered was not a gentle slope, but a chaotic barrier, a wall of plasma, pressure spikes, and radiation bursts far more turbulent than any model had predicted. It wasn't just a shift in the solar wind. It was a disturbance, a zone where the rules bent and snapped back with force. But perhaps the most chilling detail came from the density measurements. The probe had recorded massive fluctuations in particle density, so intense they suggested something was compressing the space around Voyager. The instruments indicated a kind of oscillation, like a heartbeat reverberating through the edge of the solar system, a rhythmic pulse in the dark. This wasn't static interference or machine error, it was consistent, mapped across multiple instruments, and grew stronger the deeper Voyager pushed. The data hinted at something profound and terrifying, that the edge of our solar system wasn't simply a border. It was alive, reactive, perhaps even aware of the object crossing into it. Buried inside the re-established data was something that shouldn't have been there. A narrow band signal, low frequency, continuous, and hauntingly regular. At three megahertz, 
it sat below the range of natural plasma wave oscillations. It wasn't a transmission in the traditional sense. No message, no modulation, but its consistency was what made it disturbing. This frequency had been detected faintly by Voyager years earlier, but it was dismissed as background noise. Now, with clearer data and enhanced processing, it became undeniable. The signal had always been there, it just hadn't been strong enough to notice. Until Voyager moved closer. What made it more puzzling was its uniformity. It didn't shift with solar radiation, it wasn't affected by electromagnetic storms. It was constant, like a ticking clock buried in the fabric of interstellar space. Some tried to explain it away as a natural plasma resonance, but as Voyager advanced, the signal grew. Not in volume, but in clarity. It wasn't just background. It was targeted. Seemingly, more defined the deeper the probe moved toward a particular sector. Within mission control, the tension rose. They couldn't identify the origin, but they knew one thing for certain. This wasn't noise. It was structure. And with that realization came the question no one wanted to ask. What if Voyager wasn't just hearing space? What if something out there was emitting. As the final pieces of telemetry were decoded, NASA uncovered one last anomaly, perhaps the most unsettling of all. Voyager 1 was drifting, not due to propulsion or hardware degradation, but from an external influence. Calculations of its trajectory, when compared against earlier projections, revealed a slow but undeniable deviation. Something was exerting gravitational pull on the probe. A force consistent, measured, and unaccounted for. The region Voyager was heading toward contained no stars, no planets, and no known celestial bodies. Yet it pulled. Steadily. Subtly. Like a hand from the void. NASA began aiming other instruments. Space-based observatories. Deep radio arrays toward the region hoping to detect what Voyager was sensing. But they found nothing. No light. No heat. No mass signature detectable from Earth. Only darkness. And the pull persisted. Some suggested it might be a rogue planet, a wandering black hole, or a dense cluster of dark matter. But none of those hypotheses explained the full picture. Not the signal, not the plasma storm, not the gravitational irregularities. Voyager wasn't falling into a gravitational well. It was being led, drawn towards something that by all accounts doesn't exist. And still, the probe moves forward, alone, but no longer unanswered. As Voyager 1's signal returned and its anomalies began to make waves within the scientific community, something strange began to happen. Not in space, but on Earth. Several key updates from NASA's Deep Space Network, which had traditionally been made public, were now being delayed or heavily redacted. Mission logs once accessible were replaced with vague summaries, and members of the engineering team began speaking less. Even in unofficial communications, while no official statement confirmed it, the message was clear. Something in that data was no longer meant for public eyes. Insiders began whispering about closed-door briefings and high-level involvement from outside the space agency entities, known for stepping in when discoveries moved beyond science into national interest. The tension inside JPL grew. Engineers who once posted about course corrections or system updates went silent. Even press-friendly figures stepped away from interviews. It wasn't just a technical issue anymore. Whatever Voyager had sent back had reached a level where science and state security began to blur. 
And for a spacecraft that was never meant to return any data of this magnitude, that silence speaks volumes. With limited official information, a wave of speculation erupted from independent researchers around the globe. Some dismissed the gravitational anomaly as a pocket of condensed dark matter, an uncharted cluster dense enough to deflect Voyager's path. Others theorized that the 3 kHz signal might be the residue of an ancient cosmic event, a dying echo from the early universe that just happened to align with Voyager's journey. But then came the more radical ideas. That the signal was artificial. That the gravitational anomaly was not a mass, but a field. That Voyager had entered a domain beyond conventional physics. A few theorists pointed to earlier, largely forgotten anomalies recorded by Pioneer 10 and 11, slight but unexplained decelerations dismissed at the time as thermal effects. Now, some wondered if those early probes had merely grazed a boundary Voyager was now breaching entirely. The most unsettling hypothesis, though, came from a fringe group of astrophysicists that Voyager wasn't moving toward an object at all, but toward a response. That its presence, its signals, its trajectory had triggered something. Like activating a switch in a machine far older than we could imagine a part of space that only reveals itself when we cross a line we were never meant to approach. Even for those who cling to scientific explanations, the emotional impact of Voyager's data is undeniable. We've always believed in boundaries. Earth, the moon, Mars, the heliopause. We've always seen space as a blank canvas, a passive backdrop for our instruments and ambitions. But now... With this discovery, that belief is cracking. Because if space isn't empty, if the edges of our solar system react, echo, or respond, then the universe isn't just a playground. It's a system. And, like any system, it may have parameters, limits, rules, maybe even protectors. Voyager 1, once a symbol of limitless human curiosity, now floats as something more profound. A messenger, returning not just with data, but with consequence. If the probe is indeed being pulled, if its path is no longer determined by physics alone, then we must ask, what lies beyond the dark? And, more urgently, should we keep going? Voyager 1 was never meant to return like this. It was a relic, a goodbye letter to the stars, drifting into silence. But against all odds, it spoke one last time. And that final whisper didn't bring comfort, brought a question, one that echoes louder than any signal. What if the edge of the solar system was never a boundary, but a threshold. What if the silence we've heard from space was never emptiness, but restraint? What if Voyager didn't just observe the void, but was seen by it? The low-frequency signal, the gravitational anomaly, the magnetic distortions, they may be data points on a screen, yes, but they may also be warnings, clues that the fabric of space itself is not as still and indifferent as we believed, that beyond the warmth of our sun, there are forces older than time, watching, waiting, perhaps even responding. And now we must ask the question no one dares to speak aloud. Was sending Voyager out there a mistake? Thank you for joining us today on Why. Let us know your opinions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Keep waiting for another exciting Why adventure, and until then, stay curious and stay tuned. This is Why, signing off.